I don't have the tests graded. I might have them graded by Thursday. There's a chance I have started grading them. So, you know, starting is, you have to start before you can finish, that's for sure. Um, that's true, but I mean, I try to have, you know, offer something for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, Monday, uh, there's no office hour. There's no, I'm not going to be here on Monday. So if you have another class with me, you do. Uh, I won't be at that class, and I won't be at office hours. I will be in Arizona. I don't remember. Near Phoenix, though. I didn't, I didn't make the arrangements. Relaxing. And grading. Probably. No, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm sure just relaxing for a long weekend will help me get them graded more quickly when I get back. Though. Um, so that's Monday the uh, 10th. All right. Uh, who remembers what we were talking about? Before the test, what topic are we into right now? Yes, that's the that's the overall topic. Internal loads, and then yeah, now we're doing it for structures. Um, yes, that's great. Um, so really what we're doing is internal loads in anything that um, isn't automatically oriented with the x-axis along the long axis of the beam. Uh, and so what we do is we solve the structure or calculate the external loads, and then we use the rotation matrix to reorient the coordinate system. And so I'm going to do an example, and then you're going to do an example. Um, So here's the first one. It's just a single member, but it's at an angle. Uh, it makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. So this angle's 30 degrees. And at the midpoint, there's a 1,000 Newton force. This is frictionless. Um, and then the coordinate system is like this. And we want to calculate the internal loads in those beams. Um, this has a length of 0.5 meters. We're going to neglect the weight. And um, in fact, um, I'll say this to get it solidly in your notes after this example. But in these problems where we're using rotation matrices, um, we're always going to neglect the weight. Because for internal loads, the weight always shows up as a distributed force, distributed load. And I haven't talked about how to use that rotation matrix with distributed loads. It actually is like if you were super motivated, um, like if you really had a reason to figure it out, based on the approach that we have for point forces, you could probably figure it out, you know? Like someone has your sister hostage or whatever, and you, you know, like that's what I mean by highly motivated. And they, and they say you can have your sister back if you figure this out. You could probably figure it out. There's nothing too surprising about it, but we're just not doing it because you got to stop somewhere. I do have a sister, but I, it wouldn't bother me, so. Okay, yeah, exactly. Yeah, keep her. I'm not doing that. <laughs> More presents for me at Christmas. Um, the first step is to calculate the external loads. So 
there's a force vector here. I'll call that RA. Um, the force at the wall is perpendicular to the wall toward the chosen body with um, a force with a known force, RB. A force, a force with a known direction, RB. And then um, this downward force of 1,000. So rho, force, moment. Yes. So even though the length of that bar kind of would keep it from going past just 30, it wouldn't go any more than 30 degrees anyway, especially the wall. That's right. The, the wall keeps it from falling any farther. If there was, so if, that's an interesting question. Um, if there was friction between the, um, well, think of it this way. That wall, even if there's no friction, that wall is capable of holding it in that position. Right. Okay. And so um, even if there was friction, it would be, um, Well, the easiest way to think of this is you can't do this status problem if you treat it like it has friction. Okay. So then, because you'd have two unknowns here and two unknowns there, and you only have three equations. So then the next question, I guess, is uh, would the force applied by friction, is it going to be so important that it's worth not being able to do this as a statics problem. And there are ways to do it that we'll learn in D form or whatever. <laughs> and I think the final answer is like if you just think about like are these forces, imagine it with friction and imagine it without friction. You think those forces are going to be drastically different. And I think most of us would probably say, no, you can probably approximate it pretty well. Like imagine this being um concrete and then imagine this being uh ice, you know. Those forces intuitively are going to be similar enough that we might as well do the problem we're capable of solving. Okay, so um, we have to choose an about point. I'll choose it here. So what's the row vector for the force RA? Yep, zero, zero. Uh, force vector is RA. X and Y components. The moment is zero. Um, then the row vector for the 1,000 Newton force. Well, actually, let's do it because I can do it in my head. Let's do the one up at RB. Um, so the row vector is going to be 0. 0.5 times cosine and sine of 30. And that's 4.33, uh, 2.5. Find decimal point. So 0 0.433, 0 0.25. That force vector RB is negative RB, 0. And so the cross product is positive 0.25 RB. And now if um, the vector to go to RA is 0, 0, the vector to go to RB is this that we just calculated. This one's right in between those two. So the midpoint is just going to be the average of those. So it's going to be 0.217, let's call it 0.125. And then the force vector is 0, negative 1,000. And the cross product is uh, 2, negative 2, 16.5, I think exactly. Any questions about that? So Newton's second law says 
the RA vector plus negative RB zero plus zero negative 1,000 is equal to zeros. And the moment equation says 0.25 RB minus 216.5 is equal to zero. Um, and if you solve these, you get RB is equal to 866. And the vector RA is equal to 866, 1,000. Any questions about that? Okay, so now we have the external loads. Um, now we want to calculate the internal loads, but first we have to go from this coordinate system. So our external loads are in this coordinate system. And we want to represent them in a coordinate system that's aligned with the axis, like this. Where this angle is 30 degrees. So what's theta for this rotation? Counterclockwise is positive. So yeah, that's, we, um, to get from this one to this one, you have to write the counterclockwise 30. So theta is positive 30. And so the rotation matrix is cosine of 30, sine of 30, negative sine of 30, cosine of 30. So that's 0 0.866, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.866. And um, so now just one by one, we're going to go through these forces. Uh, let me. Uh, draw the free body diagram again now that we know all these values. So RA is equal to 866, 1000. This force in the middle, uh, that's a downward force of 1000, so I can write that as the vector 0, negative 1000. And then at this end, uh, we have the vector negative 866, 0. Now, one by one, I'm just going to multiply these forces by the rotation matrix. Um, so RA is 0 0.866, 0 0.5, negative 0.5, negative 0.866, times this force 866, positive 1,000. And if you multiply that, you get 1250, 433. <laughs> um, then that middle force, that external force of 1,000, um, we're going to multiply the same vector. or multiply that same rotation matrix times this vector, 0, negative 1,000. And you get negative 500, uh, negative 866. And then our B, 
same rotation matrix. times the vector representation of RB, so negative 866, 0. Is equal to negative 750, uh, 433. So what we have now is there's the body, and in this new coordinate system, RA is equal to 1250, um, 433. Oh, the center of the whole idea here is that we have this coordinate system rotated like this. And at the center, that force is negative 500, negative 866. And then at the end, we have the force vector negative 750, positive 433. So the only difference here, this is exactly the same thing. It's just that we're breaking up our components in different directions. And now, this is what we want. Um, all, all we want in the survey in those calculations is to have the coordinate system oriented so that the x axis goes around the peak. So now we can draw it horizontally. The mathematical relationship is all that matters. So now it's just like, this is what we want. You just turn your head a little. And so now this is exactly equivalent to this. Okay. Any questions about that? So now once you've gotten here, this is just an easy internal loads problem because there's no distributed loads. Um, what's n for this? How many places where the subfunctions can change? Three. And so we're going to do two cuts. Cut one is for x's between 0 and 0 0.25. So on the left end, we have the force vector of 1250, 433. And on the right end, we have T, V, and M. Newton's second law says 1250, 433, plus T negative V is equal to zeros. So T is equal to negative 1250, and V is equal to positive 433. And then the moment equation, our about point is the left end, so there's no moment produced by RA. So we just have M minus VX is equal to zero. So M is equal to VX, or M is equal to 433X. And then the second cut 
is for x is between 0.25 and 0.5. So at the left end, we have 1250, Somewhere between the ends, we have the force negative 500, negative 866. And then the internal loads. So the right. Going to be in there at all? Uh, no, not in the cuts. So, um, if you look back at all the example problems, um, we never have the external loads at the right endpoint in the cuts because, yeah, I, and it's because of this. We're we're dealing only with the range, so the right end is in between point two five and point five, not including point two five and point five. So it has to be a little bigger than this. The smallest it can be is a little bit past this force, and the longest it can be is just before you get to those forces at the right end. So Newton's second law says 1250 or 33 plus negative 500, negative 866. Plus T negative V is equal to zeros. So T is equal to negative 750. And V is equal to negative 433. And the moment equation. Um, there's no moment produced by RA. There is a moment produced by the vertical force in the middle. So that has a moment arm of 0.25. It's a downward force of 866. And so a downward force, if this is the about point, and you apply a downward force of 866, and then we have plus m minus vx equals zero. So m is equal to vx plus, that must be uh for okay two one six point five yeah yeah okay okay and uh so m is equal to negative four thirty three x plus two sixteen point five And then all those same checks that um, we've talked about work in this case too. Uh, DMDX has to equal V. Um, so DMDX on the second half of the beam is negative 433. That matches V. Negative DVDX has to equal Q. What's Q in this problem? What's the distributed load? There's no distributed load. What's a synonym of, um, what's a mathematical synonym for no? Yeah, exactly. So uh, dvdx has to equal zero. And it does here. And then we can look up at the derivative checks for the first cut. Uh, dmdx is equal to 433. dvdx is equal to zero. Then you can do the checks at the endpoints too. Any questions about that? So, uh, I mean, you can imagine how useful that is. We now, as long as the weight is not a significant contributor to internal loads, 
we can do a calculation with a you know of a structure with a whole bunch of bodies calculate the external loads on each one of those bodies and then use those external loads to figure out how the internal loads vary over the member that's that's a lot we can figure out about what's going on in these structures um the thing notice notice that's how you know you're supposed to notice this that's also how you know that this is a good candidate for uh, quizzes. Um, we can't do internal loads for non-horizontal beams. Um, with distributed loads. The most important distributed load is weight. So that means we can't deal with the weight. As long as all you have are um, point couples and point forces, we can do those calculations. Okay, Let's, uh, I'm going to give you another one. You can't do Mm -hmm. triangle on top of it. Right, we can't do that um, because uh, we haven't talked about how to use the rotation matrix with distributed loads. Um, and the easiest example of that is this problem here. If I had said that that beam has a weight of 50 kilograms or something, um, that weight is a distributed load, so we wouldn't be able to use this approach. But if you want to know how to do it, come talk to me and, you know, I could explain it in not very long. We're just sort of drawing the line there. Yeah, by the time you're done figuring out it, Well, the thing is now, so if, if we included the weight in this, there would be a downward distributed load here, right? Mm -hmm. You could think of that as a distributed load vector in the negative y direction. Mm -hmm. And then when we, just, uh, when we applied the rotation matrix to that, we get a distributed load that had X and Y components, you know. And we just haven't talked about how to deal with horizontal distributed loads. They're actually easier to deal with than vertical ones. But, you know, you just have to stop somewhere. It's hard to deal with those in drums. No. Uh, even, uh, it doesn't even talk about the rotation matrix thing. Um, but I think it's nice because uh, the internal loads have such a uh, easily kind of understandable meaning, you know, like you're trying to figure out how likely something is to break. And um, the, we've already learned how to calculate the external loads on all the members in a structure. So it feels like you might as well take the next step and figure out like, how likely each thing is to break. I just like that. But I think in regular statics books, uh, in any static book, um, they don't take that step. Uh, I suppose, I don't know why. But they, skip internal loads. they do internal loads, but they don't take the step of saying, what if the uh, axes aren't li lined up with the member? So. Here's another example, and I want you guys to work on this on the board. So let's say these are 40 degrees.
and each of these members is one meter long. And let's say there's a downward force at the midpoint of this one of 5,000 newtons and a horizontal force at the midpoint of the other one. of 10,000 newtons. Ignore the weight. And calculate the internal loads in both of those members. Okay. 